We were looking at, do you remember what we were looking at? It had this um, acronym. Does anyone remember what it stands for? Yeah, Ranesh. Greatest Common Divisor. Greatest Common Divisor. You might start with a pair of numbers, right? Like say 18 and 20. And then the question was, well, what is the biggest number that you can divide, hence divisor, into both of those and not leave any remainders? Okay? So for example, with 18 and 20, do you remember? Well, how would we break this down? How would we use prime factor trees to help us? Could someone maybe give me a prime factorization of 18? What would you do first? Yep. Um, I'll put a 2 next to there, up there. Yep. I'm so nice. Yep, good. Someone else want to carry on from Frank's work and tell me the next thing? Abby? Um, from 9, you go 3 and 3. Okay, excellent. And at this point, I can stop, right? Because they're all 1, 2, 3. They're all, what do we call these numbers at the end? Right. Primes. Right. Very good. So I've got 2 times 3 squared. Do you remember that? Okay. Um, 20 looks to me like uh, five. 4 and 5. And then what happens to this 4? Two and two, and then one, two, three, these numbers, again, all prime, so I'm going to write it like this. So when you look at that, what is the greatest number that can fit into both of those 18 and 20? Yes, it's just going to be two. Two is it, right? Because you can see here, I've got one, two over here, and one in common, but then I'm kind of stuck. That's all I can do. A lowest common multiple is kind of like the other side of the coin, right? Instead of looking at the biggest number that fits into both, it's looking for the smallest number that both numbers fit into. Okay? Can I say that again? This is the biggest number that fits into both. But this is the smallest number that both of them fit into. So let me try and illustrate this. Okay? Millie? What I realized yesterday is when I added all of the prime numbers, so in this case, 2, 3, 3, 2, 2, all those together, yep. it equaled the number, the number at the top. Yeah, or when you multiply them, I think. Yeah, it's yes, that's exactly right. That's the whole point of doing a tree so that we see what multiplies together. Okay. So let me talk through this really briefly and then you'll see how the idea works. A multiple, I've just given you a concrete example so it's easier to understand. It. A multiple of any number, right, is what you get when you multiply that number by another whole number. So multiples come from multiplying, right? So 3 times 1 is 3. 3 times 2 is 6. 3 times 3 is 9. So here you go. All of these guys are the multiples of 3. You can get the multiples of anything, right? Now, that's what multiples are. That's not difficult. I want to think about common multiples. So when I say things are in common, right, I want you to look at this list, multiples of 3, and look at this list, the multiples of 5, which multiples do you see that are on both lists? I can see two. Yes. 30. Okay, I can see 30. That's on both lists. Are there any more? Yes. 15. 15, very good. So I've got two multiples that are on both lists. Two multiples that are common. But what I'm looking for is the lowest common multiple. Okay? So the lowest common multiple is, we can finish this sentence now, just before I get to your question, Raj. The lowest common multiple is the smallest number that is a multiple of both of the ones you're interested in. Or maybe you've got three numbers, or four, and you want something that's a multiple of all of them. Okay? That is a multiple of your chosen numbers, like say three and five. Yes? So you're saying if you had three numbers and there'd be 15, 15, and in the other number there would be 15. Would that still be a class? Yes, that's right. So, for instance, I've got, um, well, you know, I've got the multiples of 3, I've got the multiples of 5, I could, if I wanted to, have the multiples of 15. They look like this, right? Do you see there, 15 is still on the list, right? So, 15 is a common multiple of 3 and 5 and 15. But yes. I'm saying, like, if there'd be three numbers, yes. three different numbers and random numbers, yep. whatever they yep. are, and there'd be 15... Ah, okay. So if there's a number and it's not on the list, right, for one of them, it needs to be common to all of them. That's what like that's what common means. It's like a community. It means all of us share it. So therefore they all have to have that number for it to be a common multiple. Okay. Now, how do we find the common multiple? Okay. Now it looks like, did you notice? 15 is connected to 3 and 5 in a really obvious way. What's the relationship between 3, 5, and 15? Selena, do you see it? Um, 3 times 5 is 15. 3 times 5 
is 15. That's kind of nice. And frequently, the lowest common multiple is you just multiply them together. But I want to give you another example. 18 and 30. Okay. Now, these are bigger, so they're a little bit harder to deal with. We still can. If we tried our strategy before, just multiply them together. 18 times 30, it's a bit of a big number, but I think we can do it. Could we do 18 times 3? What's 18 times 3? 18, 36. Six. What's the next one after that? Uh, 54. 54. So now if I put the 0 back, it's going to be 540. Okay. So 540, I'm going to put a question mark on that one. I know it's a common multiple, but is it the lowest one? Okay. Now I'm going to show you two ways you can do this. There's a quick way and a slower way. The slower way is easier. I'll show you what I mean. See how I listed out the multiples here, right? I listed them out until I got a number that was on both lists. So let's do this with 18 and with 30. Um, we just said some of the multiples of 18. There's 18, then 36, then 54. What's the next one? What's 18 plus 54? Hmm. Can we do it in our hands? I'm pretty sure it's 72. 72, very good. Okay, 72. The next one's a bit easier because if I add 18 to that, I'm going to friends of 10. Oh, hold on, I think we've skipped one, right? Oh. 18 plus 72 is? Nine. It's just 90. And then after that is 108. Okay, I'm going to dot, dot, dot. That's a few of them. Let's see if, if I do the multiples of 30, I get a common multiple. So, what's the first multiple of 30? 30. 30. Oh, then the next one is? 16. 60. And then the next 90. one is? 90. Aha! You got one. Look, I got one, right? And I certainly got one a lot faster then 540. This is huge. This is like six times bigger than that. Okay. So here's one option. Okay, so this is option one, which is list. Okay, listing will get us a common multiple because all the multiples will be there. Then all these are multiples, and we'll just look for the same one. Okay, but there's a quicker way. Yeah. Yes. There's Say that again? There's another way as well. Yes. Well, I'm going to show you one more way, and maybe if your way is different to mine, then we'll have three ways. Okay. The way I'm going to show you has to do with um, this guy over here, these prime number trees. Oh, I'm not sure if this is the direction you're going to go in. Okay? Um, 18 and 30. I actually already have the number tree for 18 above here. I cheated a little bit. Can you help me work out what the number tree for 30 is? What two numbers would you like me to put in first? Yeah, Rinesh. Um, 15 and 2. 15 and 2, that'll be fine. How about 15? What do I do with that now? Maria? Um, 3 and 5. 3 and 5, very good. Okay. I'm done now, aren't I? I've got all the primes out. One, two, three. Okay. So here, two times three times five <laughs> is 30. Okay, good. So now what are we going to do? How is this going to help me with this? Let me show you. Okay. Remember I said it's all about common multiples. Okay. So what I want to do is something similar to what I did before in that I want to get a number that has all of these as factors and all of these as factors. Okay. So if you look, if I have a number that has a 2 in it, and a 3, two threes in fact, and also a 5, right? 2 times 3 squared times 5. Do you see that whatever that number is, I should be able to divide this into it. You see it's got all of these factors in there. Do you see I've got all of them, 2, 3, and 5? And it should be able to do this one as well. I've got all of these factors in my new red number. 2 and 3 squared. Do you see that? So what is this number? It's 2 times 3 times 3, three, times three, three. which is 9 times, times 5. five. Um, 9 times 5 is 45. 45. And 2 times 45 90. is? Aha! Uh -huh. There he is, right? I didn't have to just list them all out. I got kind of lucky that we got such a short list. This is a way of doing it logically. And I might have to list out hundreds of numbers this way. But option 2 is not list, but option two, use trees, and by trees I mean prime number trees.